If you suffer the inevitable puncture during a mountain bike ride, or you lose a little bit of pressure from your tires, there's two ways to get you back inflated. And that is a hand pump or a CO2 inflator. Now there's pros and cons to each, which I'm gonna to explore today so you can decide which one is best for you. So this is a CO2 canister and it's basically full of compressed carbon dioxide and you can get these in different volumes and you'll need an inflator which will either push on or screw onto the canister itself and then pierce that canister to release the air. Now some inflators you will need to pierce and open at the same time as inflating or something like the PT's hole shot, you can screw on, no air will come out until you push the nozzle onto your valve. Uh, it's also a good idea to consider a CO2 cover like this one because they do get cold so that just protects your hands. One of the biggest advantages to CO2 inflators is that they're so compact. These will fit in your pocket or strap to small spaces on your frame. You can easily separate the two to make them even smaller so that you can fit them in a bag or take multiple canisters and you'd be hard pressed finding a hand pump that's as small as a CO2 inflator. I think the main reason that people will buy CO2 inflators is because that they're so quick to use. Something like the PT's hole shot or the Topeak Tubi Boost, they easily inflate an entire tire with just one press of the inflator. Whereas with a hand pump, you're gonna to have to spend time pumping it up. So this is often the racer's choice as it can be set ready to use, strapped to your bike. And if you get a puncher during a race, you can literally pull that off of your bike and inflate it within a matter of seconds. Even if time isn't of the essence, another pro for the CO2 inflator is that it can seat tubeless tires. Because there's compressed carbon dioxide in there, they'll come out at a big rush and inflate it really quickly. And this can shock a tire back onto a rim if the tire is loose and if it's running tubeless. So this is a handy thing to have if you run tubeless, even if you bring a hand pump out on a trail. The biggest disadvantage I would say to a CO2 inflator is that the CO2 cartridges are single use. You can't reuse them, you can't refill them full of air, um, and if you need to inflate your tyre multiple times on a ride, perhaps you get a second puncture or perhaps the first one misfired and didn't quite work out, then you're going to need a second one. So you may have to bring multiple CO2 canisters with you and once they're done, they're done. Whereas a hand pump, you can keep putting air in, it's everlasting, it won't run out. In your CO2 cartridge, the carbon dioxide is actually stored as a compressed liquid. And as it's released as a gas, it causes an endothermic reaction. Uh, this is because it needs the energy to convert it to the gas and it's robbed from the cartridge itself. Uh, it actually robs the heat and makes the cartridge freezing cold and you'll get this frosty appearance on the metal. And when the metal is that cold, you can actually stick your hand to it. Um, so that's why often inflators will come with a cover like this PT's one, or you'll need to be operating that cartridge with a glove. CO2 inflators can be fiddly. Now, this could be due to a compatibility with the valves and the inflator itself. It could just be that you've not put it on properly and you completely misfire and waste a CO2 cartridge. So compatibility can be an issue. And on that word, some tire sealants, so tubeless sealants, might not be compatible with carbon dioxide. So if you inflate your tire with a CO2 inflator, inflator then when you get home you're going to need to release all of that air and put new air in so that it's not carbon dioxide. So a hand pump or a mini pump 
is exactly what you'd expect. It's a way of inflating a tire by hand using a pump action. Now these come in a variety of sizes. As you can see, you can get high pressure or high volume pumps. You can even get pumps with pressure gauges on them like this one, or maybe even a digital pressure gauge uh, instead. And you can often have them as a push on to the valve or as a screw onto the valve. So plenty of options for you to choose what is best for you. The biggest advantage is obviously that a hand pump is multiple use. You could get 50 punches out on the trail and it wouldn't matter because you would always have an endless supply of air. Whereas a CO2 will just be one use per canister. So you can help out your friends as well as yourself and you'll know that you only need to buy this once and you'll be set for life. One of the biggest pros for the hand pump is that you can control the amount of air you put in. So with a CO2 inflator, you're dumping air in there and without a tire pressure gauge, you won't know how much you've put in, but also it'll be harder to control the amount that you put in. With a hand pump, if you only want a little bit of pressure, for example, then you can do that. Whereas if you want a lot, you can do that too. And if you have a pressure gauge attached to it, then you can be more specific about getting the right tire pressure. For all you regular travelers out there, you may find that your airline will restrict you from taking CO2 canisters either completely or they'll limit the amount that you can take, which means you might have to buy more when you get there and you may have to leave them in that country when you come back. Whereas the hand pump is safe to fly with. So you can always take that with you uh, no matter what airline or where you go in. One of the biggest disadvantages of a hand pump is even if you buy a mini pump, which is traditionally smaller than a hand pump, it's still gonna be a lot bigger than a CO2 cartridge and inflator. It will be harder to put in your pocket. It may be a bit cumbersome in a hip pack. Uh, it would be better suited to a backpack. Uh, and you'll find it harder to find the space to put this on your bike. But you can get some converters that will allow you to attach it to your bottle cage. Even if you buy a high volume hand pump, these are unlikely to be able to seat a tire onto the rim if you're running tubeless. Sometimes I have a hard time using a track pump to seat a tire, uh, which is why CO2 inflators are usually better for that. With the hand pump, it's not gonna produce enough volume to shock the tire onto the rim. However, I will say that as long as you bring a tube with you, you should be able to use a tube and seat it that way. I think the biggest disadvantage to hand pumps is how much time it takes to inflate a tire, especially from flat. So that'll take a lot of minutes, a lot of effort, which could be a little bit tiresome when it's a cold, wet day, but also it's not one for the racers as it will create a big time disadvantage in the middle of your race run. So there you have it, my pros and cons to hand pumps and CO2 inflators. But which one do you use? Do you only use one or the other? Or do you take both on every ride? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know if I've missed any pros or cons and help out the GMBN community in the future.